Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mike. I am the American Analyst, and today we are going to be talking about an article from the New York Times. Colombia is dealing with a terrifying refugee crisis. Will wealthy nations step up to help? Well, I would like to remind Mr. Castaneda that there is a global communicable disease going on right now, and that bringing in thousands of people is probably not a good idea. If you like what I do, please be sure to subscribe to this video, subscribe to my channel, like this video, follow me on Twitter and Minds. Let's get into it. Okay, so I went through this article and there are two things that first let me give, give you an overview. There appears to be, I shouldn't even say appears to be, there is a humanitarian crisis that is currently going on in Venezuela. Now the article is about Colombia. And if you know your geography, Venezuela and Colombia are right next to each other. The article, I believe, is um, misleading because it's about the Venezuelan refugee crisis. But the article is titled about Colombia. So it seems like the article is about Colombia. It's actually not. It's actually about Venezuela. Um, as many of you probably know, there, the socialist regime in Venezuela has at last collapsed under its own weight, as they all do. Literally, as they all do. And not surprisingly, when people have nothing to eat, they leave, which is the subject of this article. People are leaving by the millions. By the millions, they are fleeing the socialist dictatorship in Venezuela. And good for them. I have nothing against these people. If I was in their shoes, I would have done the same thing. Same exact thing. Get out of there. It's a hellhole. That being said, now there's a bunch of countries that are surrounding Colombia, or excuse me, Venezuela. See, they even got me. Venezuela, that are now having to deal with hundreds of thousands of migrants. Millions total, as I said, but each one is, is dealing with hundreds of thousands of migrants. And the article is essentially about, should we help them? Or I shouldn't even say we, because it's not we yet. It's not we yet. But, should we help them? There's two things that this person does not mention in this article. One of them I've already talked about was socialism. They do not say a single word. The, the word socialism is not in this at all. Not once. And there's not even any part as to why this is happening. Why are people fleeing Venezuela in droves? Why are they doing that? Could it be that they're starving? That they have nothing to eat. I've seen pictures of people. Like imagine this. Imagine you have a group of people walking down the road. And they see a cow. And they literally attack it. I've seen videos of that happening in Venezuela. So it, it, it's just amazing to me. That it's not at all in here. At all. There's not a word about why this is happening. Not one and the second thing that they don't mention, this came out today, by the way, today. Second thing they're not mentioning is obviously CO Charlie Oscar Victor India Delta 19, which is the communicable disease I had mentioned. And this is where it really puts a wrench in. Now, I'll be honest with you. I don't like when people say, you know what, you know what, even though you're a horrible socialist dictatorship and we told you this would fail for going on a hundred years now, we told you this would fail. We told you. 
you still want us to help. Even after all that. I don't like that. But guess what? That does not absolve us of helping people if we have the ability to do so. But the corona the what, what, the coronavirus you're not supposed to say coronavirus on the and now I've done it twice on YouTube because for some reason YouTube is censoring that word which is probably a terrible idea but whatever I'm sure they have their reasons the coronavirus complicates everything everything because yes like I said I wouldn't be happy about it but I would probably say look we don't want millions of Venezuelan migrants in the United States. But it also does not absolve us of responsibility. We should probably try to help the neighboring countries around Venezuela as much as possible. And obviously, do what we can, short of, short of an intervention, do what we can, not even short of an intervention, well short of an intervention of any kind, do what we can to get the dictator, the socialist regime out of Venezuela. One of the best moments from the State of the Union was when they had the actual democratically elected leader from Venezuela in the audience. And he stood up and the entire United States government stood up and applauded him. That was one of, if not the best moment to show that look. Yeah, the United States have made some mistakes. But guess what? You're the democratically elected leader. We're going to support you. We're definitely going to support you. But the coronavirus, it just... I, I, I do know what I would do. I would turn them away. I would turn people away. I, it's, it's so... It's very difficult for me to say that. But I say it confidently because I believe it's the right thing to do. Because we don't know. We don't know what would happen. We have no idea what would happen when you bring all these people in in terms of the diseases. We have no idea. So I, I, would, I, would, I would be turning these people away. And I'm sorry. It, it, I'm, it really does pain me to say it. And it is an extremely difficult situation which should never have happened in the first place. But as has always happened, and will always happen, the socialist regime is collapsing under its own weight. So, like, with luck, with luck, this whole coronavirus thing will blow over. It will blow over quickly, and we can help these people. That is the best possible scenario. But until then... Uh, these countries, particularly like um, Mexico, Chile, and so on, that those were the two that are um, a little bit more restrictive, particularly Mexico. I 100% I support their right to not allow anybody in. 100%. With this, with this communicable disease going on, I'm sorry, it's just the way it has to be. I think we need to recognize reality um, and idealism. What we would like to do very often is not practical. I'll leave it there. If you like what I do, please be sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video, follow me on Twitter and Minds. Have a good evening. Thank you all for listening. This is Mike, the American Analyst. Follow me on Twitter, Minds, and subscribe to me on YouTube. And be sure to hit that bell notification. I'll be coming out with new videos every single day for your viewing enjoyment. Have a good one.